Hey, is this set up so that we can talk at the same time? It, it might be. Can you hear me? Sometimes it's set up where we pass a mic back and forth. Um, I'm happy with either one. Matter of fact, I think I prefer this a little bit. Um, you are the... I'm going to turn my speakers on here. There we go. Now I don't have that annoying echo. Um, this is your proposition. So technically, you start. <laughs> so go for it. All right. All right. Let's start this off. All right. So I'm talking about uh, <clears throat> evolution versus creation. All right. So along the lines sometime that there's a lot of evolutionists that believe that creationists are not scientists and that religion is going against science, which is not really the case. There's a, a lot of Christians that believe in evolution, but evolution in the way I'm speaking is uh, going by the term microevolution, which is inside the species, as in there can be more than one dog, but they won't dogs becoming cats and cats becoming deer and stuff like that okay so i, I have a few parts that I, i'll cover okay there is no known observable process by which genetic information can be added to an organism's genetic code basically right there uh the genetic code that a specific species has like say the human strand that there's nothing that can be added to that it, it can be it can lose some but it, it can't be gained as in you can't go from uh, a lesser species to uh, a greater species okay uh right there that should refute most of it with evolution but I'm trying to, I should have wrote my notes a little bit bigger. Uh, living organisms cannot produce new genetic information. So how can something gradually change into something with higher intelligence? In plain English, how can you evolve from a, like an amoeba to something to a man? You know, they call it from the, the molecule to man speed thing of, uh, of evolution. Part two, uh, never has it been observed that life can come from non-life. As in, you know, when, when the evolutionists talk about uh, there was a big bang and then there was this molecule right here and this came together and this dust came together to form rock and rock to blah, 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 blah. To make a long story short, there is no way that life can come from non-life. It's just not not something that's, that's proven. Uh, so molecules to man doesn't really make scientific sense whatsoever but we're here uh however when you look at the bible and i i do have a few scriptures that i want to quote from time to time the first one uh is romans 120 for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without any excuse. So basically that goes back to, and I'll talk about, I'll hit this a few times, which is the proof is in the creation. Everything that we have has a purpose. Uh, you have hummingbirds that pollinate flowers. Then you have uh, trees that produce oxygen. These are not things that can be evolved. Like gravity is, you can't evolve gravity. Gravity is there. This shows that there it's creator. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and stop there just for a bit. I don't want to go too far and go all the way in. I don't want to no, use too okay. much of your time. I have a question to ask you first. Um, are you a young earth creationist? You are? Okay. No problem. Yes. Just something I wanted to clarify at the beginning. Um, <laughs> when I agreed to okay. this debate, the topic was there is more proof to support creationism than proof of evolution. 
And all of my thoughts and preparation for this debate has been assuming that that as the proposition. So I'm going to proceed as if it still were versus um, evolution versus creation uh, or creation versus evolution. Um, not to be difficult, but that's actually a proposition where evolution versus creation isn't a formal proposition. It's just sort of like uh, a, you know, um, the Incredible Hulk versus Spider-Man sort of thing, right? Nothing has been proposed. <laughs> uh, and I need to okay. explain up at the beginning. I'm an atheist, right? But I don't... That doesn't automatically okay. mean that I'm a proponent of evolution. I am... This is complicated. I am neither a proponent. Okay, you just disappeared from my screen. Or an adherent of evolution. Uh, I neither disbelieve in it or disbelieve in it. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, for me evolution is the theory of evolution rather is useful only for its I'm going to say alleged uh, explanatory power to biologists it's sort of like you take the theory of gravity and you take the the laws of motion and the laws of thermodynamics, etc. Well, those are all things that that scientists have decided are are true, are sort of governing laws of the universe. And I say universe because the assumption is that those are that, that the, the laws of thermodynamics and the laws of motion are true any place in the universe uh, that you know that's not falsifiable but it's still the assumption made by science and i don't really care whether either one of those things are true absolutely <laughs> but but they're <laughs> okay but they have practical application um they allow us uh to predict and to test, uh, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm going to get some of the jargon wrong, but um, whether whether the the explanations that science provides are technically accurate, whether they conform to reality actually i find utterly irrelevant because science is useful for me as a tool only so if tomorrow i turned on cnn and and you had a sober looking scientist that said oh crap there's no such thing as gravity <laughs> it's something else and said we're wrong in all of our explanations i have no vested interest in one scientific theory over another i don't care so if scientists came on the news tomorrow and said oh geez time exists as a consequence of the elasticity of custard pudding that would be okay to me as as long as it still allowed us to predict things usefully and as long as they had some reasonable evidence to support it. But which explanation or which theory for per me personally, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. So I don't believe in evolution in the sense of it's not dogma or doctrine to me, but it's something that 
biologists explain to me um, is is useful for them in conducting their uh, biologist work, uh, and I'm not. I I can't argue with them in that regard. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to you. You're breaking. I I can't hear you. You're breaking let me, up. Let me let me talk about this portion. Let me. Uh, okay, so. Thomas Aquinas. So, and I, I won't very seldom will I actually quote. In I I don't know whether you're coming through because I I'm only anybody that has any one out of every ten words maybe. You mentioned Thomas Aquinas, and that's the last that I've heard. Okay, hopefully you can still hear me. I'll try to. I'll try to get through this. Okay, so Thomas Aquinas, uh, a, a pastor, uh, a priest, also a scientist. He came up with five scientific reasons that show the universe had come from a creator, not from randomness can you still hear me i can your picture has come back okay all right so we're gonna go with everything has a purpose okay so you have bees that cross pollinate plants that are unable to reproduce you have trees and plants creating oxygen that land animals need to breathe you have earth is an exact distance from the sun that provides for four livable seasons to ensure life can exist you have the earth that is just the right amount of gravity for us to live life. Plants didn't evolve into giving out oxygen. The earth didn't evolve into being the perfect distance from the sun to sustain life. Gravity didn't evolve into existence. The moon is the exact size and distance from earth that enables for a lunar eclipse. The, the exact perfect thing. Uh, everything has a purpose. And purpose is a product of intelligence each thing having a purpose fits with the design of an intelligent being <clears throat> which like i said every once in a while i'm going to quote a, script, a scripture and the one i have for this genesis 131 and god saw everything that he made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day so that's what i have for that's my first bit of of proof of what well, my evidence of creation as opposed to random the randomness of evolution okay uh is it is it my turn by all means go oh, ahead okay. um okay i don't believe that anything is random but nor do i believe that it's determined and i know that sounds like a contradiction it's it's actually not i believe that shit happens to put it to put it in the vernacular <laughs> um randomness if things were actually random then when i stood up to walk to my the, the door to this room uh the door would have the potential of disappearing um Wednesday might follow Thursday, etc. The universe is demonstrably not random. Um, I, but I'm also not saying that it's determined because that makes it sound like uh, there was a mind that... Uh, determined what was going to happen next and i know that that isn't strictly what determinism is um i do believe that there is randomness in the sense of the of of chaos theory so you take a 
tornado and you take its initial positions or or any storm and we don't have the capability and probably never will to predict exactly what's going to happen you know exactly where it's going to end up exactly what the vo maximum velocity of the wind is going to be etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, which we would be able to do at least theoretically if the universe was entirely deterministic the universe is probabilistic versus random or versus determin uh, deterministic we have a little element of unpredictability which is demonstrated you know as one example by the uh wave how oh, i'm forgetting the other term of the way that light moves through the through the universe um by quantum mechanics um but basically two trillion years ago this is the universe that we were going to have approximately no randomness required and for me you were conflating a, a few issues um abiogenesis doesn't doesn't address evolution uh or evolution doesn't address abiogenesis i guess i should say and as far as the <sighs> the origin of the universe and everything you know the cosmological explanations again who's to say that absolutely everything that is hasn't existed forever i'm familiar with william lane craig's and other christian apologist refutations of that um but it's it's philosophizing based on anything uh, that is demonstrable fact. And while philosophizing is pretty useful, that's what we're both doing here to a degree. Um, we don't use it to prove anything empirically. And, and the discussion that we're having right now concerns empirical fact god either created the universe and life blah 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 or he didn't and even as an atheist i'm willing to entertain the possibility because i believe or i don't believe that god exists but i'm perfectly willing to concede that he might um and if we have an omnipotent omniscient super being who created and controls the universe okay that's fine but i'm not my paradigm my world view doesn't include the existence of god or the supernatural but if it did then god having created the universe would be just as reasonable of an explanation for me to me as it having evolved or a really any other mechanism um let me ask you one question before i hand it back to you um do you if i if i was speaking of historical science versus operational science are you aware of that distinction <laughs> yes and I, I i am i am aware of that but i also am aware that a lot of a lot of atheist scientists don't believe in the two different sciences they believe that there is only one and that is the only one but to to answer your question yes i i do okay i um uh... The reason I ask that because basically, okay, we have no access to the past. 
none. Contrary to the common perception. Um, we have access to history, but we have access to history because we wrote it. History is the historian's reconstruction of the past based on whatever evidence that we have. That's what, that's a principle, I might mispronounce this word, of historiography. That's the sort of the bedrock of historical method. Um, now, obviously, I'm not saying that uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was the first president in my lifetime, that I, you know, that there's any question that he lived and that he was president. We have the uh, the video evidence, uh, lots of convincing evidence. Once you move back into ancient history, I'm not willing to make that statement. Um, I, there's so many tangents that I could go on here, so I, but I'll avoid doing, but I'll avoid doing so. Um, all cosmological theories are his, are in the domain of historical sciences, which means that they're forever non-falsifiable. Might be true, might not be true. They are workable explanations. Again, they allow us to predict things about nature in the world um, that are utili they're utilitarian uh, versus being demonstrably, incontrovertibly true or false. Uh, so I don't value at all outside of their utility any cosmological theory. Frankly, I could give a shit whether the Big Bang theory uh, is accurate or not. It's a functional theory. I value it for pragmatic reasons only. Back to you. Okay, I, I lost you for a little bit, but I, I think I understood where you were going. Uh, in talking about the, what, what is past and what we can't observe in the past, there, there are certain things, there are certain laws that we have today that it, it kind of, even there, it is disproven evolution, which furthermore, to, to my point, proves creation. Uh, you have the, the laws of thermodynamics. Um, the second law of thermodynamics that entropy of an isolated item of an isolated system always increases. And that was talking about the randomness. Okay, so entropy, uh, you know, I it, do. do you know what entropy is? Okay, so that goes directly to evolution as far as uh, evolutionists would like to say that going from an amoeba uh an amoeba to evolve to this evolve to this evolve to this evolve to this and eventually at the top of this tree because it's usually a tree at the top of this tree here you have man but however the the laws of thermodynamics say that basically as things evolve it's going to get worse not better so how can how can a person develop uh humanity the, a better brain and everything else it through uh my mind went blank through ev through evolving uh also when you start talking about macro evolution versus micro evolution macro evolution as a whole is is unproven uh scientists will tell you that it's like you were saying as far as things that cannot be observed at all and 
there there are a lot of things when you're talking about evolution that is on faith and i, I find that funny that there are some and none of this is, I, I want you to know that none of this is a knock on you at all oh because you're the atheist that i'm talking to right now but uh i have a lot of friends who are atheists and they i am i am made fun of because of you know faith in the god that i can't see and a god that i can't specifically you know use my hearing to hear him well evolution and the people that believe in evolution which is i have one specific friend in mind is it's funny that there's a lot of stuff through evolution that is also faith-based uh like like i said like macroevolution and 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 i watch and i look at these charts of macroevolution and and you see this uh you, you see this there's this thing that it, it first was in the water then it came out of the water and from this thing uh all life on earth came from this so basically all dogs all cats birds eagles everything you could come up with all comes from the same thing however there is no proof there are no fossils that show any of this. When you look at the fossil records, and I'll just assume you know about the, uh, you've probably looked into the, the pre-Cambrian explosion. When you look at it, at least, I'm sorry, the Cambrian explosion. When you look at the, uh, the, the pre-Cambrian level of the strata, you see that there's, there's barely any fossils at that level right there. Then once you get to the Cambrian's uh, level of the strata, bam, you have all multiple celled organisms. So in, in that period right there, it's impossible to show th th there's no transitional beings right there. There's no nothing. And also, when you talk about DNA, DNA DNA can't be established through evolution. Okay, your face is frozen on my screen. So I don't know if you're still talking or not. Okay, I've gone back to your sort of profile pick so I I'm going to assume the worst that you become disconnected so I'm going to proceed here I'm going to take the mic metaphorically speaking ah uh, regarding faith faith is one of those polysemous English words and that it has uh, more than one accurate definition. Um, and, oh, maybe you're coming back. Okay. Uh, and I'm, you can hear me okay? Your face just froze again on my screen. Um, I understand that uh, secular viewpoints of the world require faith and that religious, uh, or if you want to say it that way, supernatural explanations for the world require faith. But I think there's a significant difference um, between the types of faith that's required. Um, when I finish with this debate, I'm going to walk my dog. And while I'm walking my dog, I'm going to go to a convenient store down the street and probably buy her a puppy to, to, uh, treat, snack. Um, I don't know that I won't get hit by a car or uh, die of a heart attack or 
that I, I don't know that I'll survive the trip back, but I have faith that I will. And I'll do everything that I can to guarantee that I will survive that voyage. I'll look both ways as I cross the street, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not an evidenceless faith. Um, I have tried to take steps to guarantee the outcome. Uh, that's just one example of, of the differences. From the atheist perspective or the secular perspective, um, our faith is a little bit more logical. Uh, if it's not supported by empirical evidence, then we accept the things on faith that we have no choice but to accept. Um, when I grab the jar of peanut butter out of my cupboard to make myself a peanut butter sandwich, I, I accept on faith that the peanut butter doesn't contain cyanide or something. Uh, because if I if I didn't eat every single time that I wondered whether there was cyanide been added as an ingredient to my meal and sent all of that food off to a lab, I would never eat. So for practical reasons, I accept a lot of things on faith. Um, in the case of I'm going to assume that you're a Christian, but you might not be. Maybe you're a Muslim or something else. Um, if you, from my perspective, the things that you accept on faith are neither for empirical reasons nor practical reasons, but but because it makes you happy to do so. And I'm not mocking that. I was a Christian for a long time. Um, and that's, that's all I have to say on that. Your, your go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me. You were right. I, I am a Christian and there's, there's nothing that you're saying that that's offended me. Trust me. I, I've, I've heard a lot worse, but, uh, talking, talking about the, the faith of, of evolution also, but there's, to me, it's like I said, in and in, in doing my research for this debate, it's it is crazy the things that say evolutionists really take on faith. Uh for example, there's there's there is no way there's no way that any scientist has been able to prove get, to get life from non-life. Uh there is no place, there is no uh experiment that's been able to recreate molecule to the first cell uh bacteria cell to animal cell single cell organism to multiple cell organism from jellyfish to a, an animal with the backbone uh the fish to land but all of these all of these are important steps in re, in regards to evolution however none of this stuff is able to be recreated or proved is just taken by faith that it must have happened however when you look at going back to the the cambrian period which is the the, the cambrian explosion as it's, as it's called it's it reflects what the bible said that all the animals were there that is why when you look at the cambrian the, the strata level of the, the cambrian period while there's all these animals there and all of them are multi-cell organism it's because it reflects more more what the bible says as opposed to the evolu the the evolutionary little tree that they use all all the multi-cell organisms are there and like i said how do you how do you evolve from the water to being on land as far as okay so do you get lungs second or do you get lungs first does this animal come out okay how does it go how do you 
how do you have a heart but don't have a brain? How do you have lungs but don't have a heart? It's 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 everything. There is really nothing that makes sense about evolution. Like I said, everything that happens to, to me, and trust me, I do have fact. I'm not just talking off the top of my head, but you speak so eloquently off with your opinion. I decided to do the same for mine. But it's all this. Like I said, uh, the fossil record, which can be observed. Uh, did you, in your research, did you happen to see the the C14 uh, carbon 14? Did you did you see anything about that? Are you asking me a question? Yes, carbon dating C14. I, I know I know what it is. I, you know I've read arguments as to its accuracy uh, in both directions. Um, I'm not going to pretend to understand it scientifically. I'm very far from being a scientist. Um, do you know what methodological naturalism refers to? Oh, no, I don't. I, okay, I, I'm just. But, going but you to can explain, explain to me. I think our time is starting to what anyway. you just said. Now, this is actually uh, a buzzword currently on uh, on Christian apologist web pages uh, discussing the sorts of things that we're discussing. Um, now, method methodological naturalism uh, is very similar to metaphysical naturalism. And I need to explain the difference very briefly. Methodological naturalism means that you, you look for a natural explanation uh, for every phenomenon. You're looking for an explanation that does not involve God at first. But methodological naturalism doesn't exclude automatically uh, a supernatural explanation. But it mandates that you look for the natural explanation first. Metaphysical naturalism uh, is atheistic. Uh, it never looks beyond the natural explanation. And while this surprises a lot of Christians, methodological naturalism is essentially a Christian invention. It was Christian scientists, and not as in the denomination, but, but Christians who were scientists, who at the time were called natural philosophers, who formalized and polished and buffed this method of of conducting science because they realized that if you didn't look for the natural explanation first that everybody would just stop as because they would say oh god did it and and that immediately cancels any further explanation so in science you are compelled to look first for the natural explanation, for the, for the non-supernatural explanation. Um, and that's a foundational principle of the, uh, the non-theistic theory of evolution. Uh, so, you know, to answer your questions about how uh, macro evolution works, how we go from one kind to another kind, from one species to another, I don't know. And I don't think that evolutionary biologists do either, but they're operating under the assumption that there is a natural explanation because there's been a natural explanation for virtually every phenomenon that we've observed in the past. Uh, frankly, most evolutionary bi biologists, whether they know it or not, are probably adherents of metaphysical naturalism instead of methodological naturalism. 
I'm not. I'm purely in the, or entirely in the methodological naturalist camp, meaning that I would be perfectly willing to accept God or the supernatural as an explanation, provided um, that first I had some reason to believe in God. And yes, I'm talking about the Judeo-Christian concept here. I'm not going to pretend that we're talking about uh, deism or anything else. Um, over to you. Okay. Uh, huh, that's pretty deep. You covered a lot. Uh, the interesting thing is when when I've talked to atheists and when you, you talk to atheists and they they tell you basically their biggest thing about God, it's usually, uh, you mean to tell me that there's some big God in the sky right there and he's judging you. If you do anything wrong, he's going to punish you. And it's funny because as, as, okay, just so you know, I'm a, I'm a theology major and it's it's funny how that's what atheist goes to in one of the classes that I, I took it says that the reason why people a lot of people run away from god is because they don't want to feel that they're being judged okay so with that being said that's that's one aspect of of the way some people see god as in they see god as this guy that's judging them if they do something wrong they're going to be punished however when you look at the whole picture of God and, 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 and I'm going to go kind of, but our discussion kind of uh, my, my biggest creation is that a lot of things that exist cannot just be random. Uh, when you go into, I'm not very smart about the, the universe, but I, I'll just cover a little bit. Uh, when you go on, when you look at, the exact distance that the moon is from the earth to create the proper tidal wave. You look at the exact distance from the earth is from the sun that it, 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 it's able to, to, uh, to hold life. And when you look at gravity and you look at everything and it's God created the perfect place for humankind to live. It cannot happen randomly. It, it can't. When you look at DNA, Human DNA is to make to, to to make a long story short, the evolutionary scientists they can't see how they can't prove how DNA can evolve because it can't. It's it's been created, it is the way it is. Humans are the way they are. There's in the Bible, there's there's one kind, there's humankind, and humankind are humankind, then you have dogs that are dogs like i've even heard some people that talk about as far as they, they bring up the dark and how can you your audio is not coming through when you're frozen on my screen I was no way what they're mixed with, but they're mixed with something. And so when we're going back to Noah and the ark and these animals, Noah didn't need to bring uh, a pit bull, a Rottweiler, uh, a wolf, uh, uh, I'm out of dogs right now. But you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, just the, the, the species and then from there, they would evolve. Like I said, there is creationists. They will creationists. They will never say that there's no such thing as evolution. We believe in evolution. We just believe in micro evolution as opposed to macro evolution. And the the science that's able to be observed now with everything it it shows. Yes, species within each other they do change. Like I said, 
you have dogs and, and there's different types of dogs and chances are but from now to the end of time there'll be a hundred more dogs but there is no proof there is no anything that shows any kind of macro evolution and if you if and it kind of goes back to the faith that that is in and i 